Hey everyone, it's Hugh Sweeney here again, back with another video. Now tonight I'm sitting here in my studio. It's nice and tidy for once, and I decided to go through the contents of my home studio here to explain to you exactly what I have, the setup I have for editing videos and photographs and all that kind of stuff. So let's start, okay. Hey, where's the beef? Beef, beef, beef. Well, obviously, first up we got the iMac, and this is a 2013 iMac. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM. So this Mac has a fast SSD hard drive. It's not that big a hard drive. It's only like 550 gigabytes. It's not the fastest iMac in the world. Obviously the new iMac Pro is gonna, it's gonna process circles around this one. But for me, for now, for the cost, it does pretty much everything I wanted to do. So that is the iMac. I'll get back to the software side of the iMac pretty soon. But just let's have a look, starting over here on the right hand side, we have of course the microphone which I use for voiceovers. Now this is the AKG C214 microphone. It's got the same diaphragm in it as the industry standard AKG C414, which is a very, very popular voiceover, large diaphragm microphone. Now the mic goes into the Apogee Duet sound card. Now I've got the Duet since 2013 as well. It's a great little sound card, but it's probably you know, there's probably a lot better technology out there now. There's probably newer sound cards that cost a lot less than that did for me. So, you know, maybe I should get like some, a new sound card at some stage. I got these Fostex PM1 speakers way back in like 2003, 2004, I think. I think they're six inch cones, probably a little bit too big for this setup here because I'm very close to them, but you know what, it works. Now, if you look here, I've actually sort of built this MDF little cage here that goes right around, it sort of wraps around the iMac and it houses all the hard drives. I put that in when I got the table made back in 2014 and I gotta say, you know, if you have something like this, it just makes it so much easier because it gives me different levels which I can store stuff at and the hard drives are sort of positioned a little bit up the cables are hidden in behind and it all looks pretty good. Over here we have two hard drives. One of these is a Thunderbolt hard drive. The other is a newer USB hard drive. That guy there is a Thunderbolt. That's a Thunderbolt uh, hard drive at the front here, which has built in two, two built in USB ports there. And it's quite convenient. So that's kind of all the hard drives. Over here we have a little custom shelf I made. And in the background, a big inspirational picture of New York City, man. So we've got New York in the background there. Works pretty good. I don't have any major lighting in here, just one or two bulbs around the place. It's usually fairly dark. And the room isn't that big, to be honest with you. It's a nice cozy little room. So let's have a look at the Mac. So first up, we have DaVinci Resolve, which is currently open here. At the moment, I'm just bouncing down a load of files. That's how I work, okay? Some people like to edit first and then export to DaVinci Resolve. Other people like to you know, bring the files in and edit in DaVinci Resolve and then color grade. What I like to do is, I like to bring everything from my camera into DaVinci Resolve and give it a nice, even, quick color grade that I can tweak later in Final Cut. The reason I do that is because in most cases I'm shooting on the Panasonic GH5. And when you shoot internally on the GH5, it records in like a H.264 format, which is sort of a compressed format. In other words, it's like as if the file is sort of zipped to a certain extent, it's in a wrapper. Whereas a ProRes file is just the file and the editing software can access just the file and it's more smooth than editing H.264 file. The same with DJI Phantom codecs. If you try and edit a DJI Phantom codec, it's not that good. It's not smooth, it's jittery, it's jumpy, it's horrible for editing. So what I do is, when I shoot on the Panasonic GH5, when I shoot on the DJI Phantom, okay, or even like an Osmo or another camera that shoots in one of those compressed formats, I bring it in to Resolve. I give it a color grade in Resolve, and then I export it out of Resolve as edit-ready ProRes files into Final Cut Pro, I'm not worried about, you know, working with difficult files and then sending them out to color grade later. I just color grade them first. Now, a serious color grader will think I'm crazy to do that, but you have to think of the type of work you're doing. Are you editing and color grading a feature film or are you doing a corporate movie or a simple project that inevitably, let's face it, is gonna just end up on Facebook, it's just gonna end up on YouTube. So a simple color grade in most cases is what you need. Okay, so now we've looked at DaVinci Resolve and how I first work with the files and let's talk now about the different 
applications that I use to go with editing a video, okay? So obviously you're gonna have your edit software. For me, I use Final Cut Pro. Now I do have Premiere on this, but I have not migrated to Premiere yet. So I do believe that Premiere would be better and I do want to switch over to Premiere, but as of now, I just love Final Cut Pro. If you're new to editing, if you're an experienced editor, I would highly recommend Final Cut Pro because it's very fast, it's very simple, and it works. There was a lot of complaints about Final Cut Pro, but we've seen in recent years, we've seen a migration back to Final Cut Pro. Lots of high-end users, lots of very professional people opting to use Final Cut Pro over Premiere, even though Premiere is seen as the more professional package. So Final Cut Pro is my editor. Now what else do you need to produce a video? Can you work in an editor alone? Well the answer would be in most cases yes, but the more high-end, the more professional your production is going to end up, the chances are you're going to need a few more packages other than the edit software, okay? So at the top level video where you have a bit of everything going on, you've, you've obviously got footage, you've got some voiceover work, some music mixing going on there, you also have, we'll say, some animation going on there, you have some cool advanced color grading, you obviously have the editing, and uh, what else do you have? Maybe some design work that goes before the animation, okay? Before the After Effects, you gotta design something up like a logo. Say you've got branding for your company, you wanna animate that. Now After Effects comes in when you wanna do more advanced animation, be it text animation, be it motion graphics, slick slides, things that come in and out and move around, those lovely ease in graphics that pop up, you know, graphs, anything like that, all that is After Effects, even stuff like tracking eyeballs, After Effects, After Effects, After Effects. So what do you do before you get to After Effects? Say if you want a logo animation at the start of your video, do you design the logo in After Effects? You can to a certain extent, but you're far better off do it in the likes of Adobe Illustrator, okay? Now you can also use Photoshop for prepping images. So at the start you've got Adobe Illustrator for design, creating elements that you can animate. You also have Photoshop for the same purpose, creating textures, creating elements. Then you have your After Effects software which will animate your elements which you use for all your animation. Then you have your editing and then what do you use for sound? What I use is, I use Adobe Audition. It comes with Creative Cloud. It's a great package. If you haven't got Adobe Audition, you gotta start using it. I use it for my voiceover. I plug my mic into my Apogee Duet sound card, and then that goes into Adobe Audition, and I do my voiceovers, and I can prep my sound file. I can prep my audio recording in Adobe Audition before bringing it into my Final Cut edit suite, okay? And say if you have a project that you you know, you've got internal sound in the camera that you have recorded and edited in Final Cut Pro, and say you want to improve the audio of that, what you can do is you can export from Final Cut Pro, you can export your audio file from Final Cut Pro into Adobe Audition, and then back into Final Cut Pro and replace the entire audio strip with that new file, with all that lovely Adobe Audition processing, normalization, equalization, compression, all these little cool tools that you have. Now Final Cut has a lot of cool plugins that you can use as well for audio. It's quite good for audio, but if you want that real nitty gritty down to the little brass tack editing, you can't beat Adobe Audition in terms of my experience. Now what if you wanted to go a full tier above that in terms of say doing a soundtrack for your movie? You want to do a soundtrack for your movie? Well in the past, in, on one occasion, I actually used Logic Pro. And what I did was I bounced down the movie and I brought the movie into Logic Pro. It's got this little window, pop-up window that it lets you view the movie. So what I did was I composed the music within Logic Pro to actually match in, in line with the actual movie itself. And you can do your whole sound design to match up with the movie in Logic Pro. Now that's pretty advanced if you're not experienced in sound editing, uh, but once you get into that stuff, it's actually unbeatable, and you will get a far better soundtrack that way than if you try and do it all in Final Cut. Now in most cases, you'll get away with doing it in Final Cut, record your music first, bring it into Final Cut, but if you get used to doing it all in Logic, it's really cool. 
and uh, that is that. Now I also work as a photographer, about, about a quarter of what I output is actually photographs and some people hire me to take photographs and video of their, you know, whatever they're doing. So um, I use Photoshop and, you know, I use Photoshop extensively, I'll, I'll do all the whole the usual bells and whistles in Photoshop between layers and you know retouching all that type of stuff. I'm fairly familiar with Photoshop. I've been using it for 20 years. I should be at this stage. But um, what's better than Photoshop for organizing your photos? That's Lightroom Photoshop. Now I know a lot of photographers that actually do everything within Photoshop without using Lightroom. And for me, that would be like painting the house through the letterbox. It's absolutely ridiculous. You gotta get Lightroom. If you wanna do any sort of serious you know, batch processing of photographs, you gotta get Lightroom. So I use Lightroom as well for all my photographs, Photoshop for fine edits and photographs, and of course, Illustrator for design. So that is sort of my, my you know, image editing applications. Thanks for watching the video, guys. It's getting very late. It's now 1 a.m. and I'm really tired. My eyes are beginning to close. Uh, once again, thanks to everyone who subscribed to the channel. I'm getting a little bit of momentum here going, getting more videos out, hopefully one a week. If you haven't subscribed already, just hit that red button down below. If you're looking for advice on video production, what to buy, what camera to buy, what software to get, feel free to ask me down below as well. Now I'm on Facebook as well. You can follow my sort of personal antics on my Facebook page, Hugh Sweeney Filmmaker. You'll see where I go, where I'm flying my drone and where I'm going for coffee and all that stuff. If you want to, if that means anything to you at all and uh, check out my Instagram as well. They're all on there. I'll put the links below and uh, thanks guys. Until next time, it's over and out and I'll see you guys next time. Hey, where's the beef?